Today I wanted to drop my review of the final shape. And the reason I waited till now is because the campaign had not yet been fully accessible because the raid hadn't been beaten, but the raid got beat this morning and I did the final mission. So now you can finish the campaign and quick disclaimer, I will be talking about the campaign. So if you haven't played it and don't want spoilers, I wouldn't watch this review quite yet. Another disclaimer, I am still making this week one of the final shape, this review, so certain things I probably won't talk about because they literally just don't exist yet. They haven't been released. If there's any other secret missions or uh, post storylines after the raid, I haven't done them yet. So keep that in mind if you're watching this at a later date. And third, I'm a PvP player. So that's where I put most of my time. I uh, will be talking about that pretty extensively in like the latter half of this review. But with that aside, Let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the campaign, and I'll be breaking up into two categories, the story and the gameplay. The story going into this, I had very low expectations for, whereas the gameplay I had very high expectations for. The reason I had low expectations for the story is just because of how little development The Witness has gotten. He got inserted into the story two years ago. He felt very out of place to me at the time he got inserted at the end of Witch Queen, and they failed to flesh him out in Lightfall and basically had just this DLC to pull it off. And I actually think they did an okay job and probably slightly exceeded my low expectations. As for the gameplay though, they didn't quite meet the expectations I had. I had pretty ridiculous ones though that I want to talk about and I'll start off though talking about the story. So starting off with the story, I'm going to give my rating up front and then I'm going to explain why I feel that way. I would give the story of the final shape a 7.5 out of 10. I thought everything leading up through the first half of the campaign was kind of boring. I wasn't really interested in what was going on, probably because they spoiled Cade returning. Had that been a surprise, I think it would have been more interesting meeting him again and having him reunite with all the different characters, but he kind of knew that was going to happen, so it really didn't come as a surprise or pique my interest that much. And that's just an unfortunate marketing decision that they had to make to draw a pipe for this game. I'm not surprised they did it, just disappointed. But then you start to learn more about the witness in the second half and his weakness, which are the dissenters. However, the reason you start to learn more about them is because you talk to Veiled Statues. The reason you're talking to the Veiled Statues is because of some very bizarre character decisions relating to Zavala. They had him acting quite strange in this DLC. Uh, when you encounter him, he's in his little house getting all sad about his family, which you haven't learned a ton about if you didn't play some of the seasons leading up to this DLC. And he's just acting very strange and pair that with the fact that he has a new voice actor due to Lance Reddick passing away his character just felt like a very foreign person in this DLC it didn't really feel like the old Zavala he was acting again strange I didn't like what he was doing I thought it was just out of character for him and that the decisions around his character were rushed just to get this story going and to get us interacting with the darkness because it's hard to otherwise explain why we would do such a thing because it's very weird to just go and start talking to these statues when they could very much just be things manipulating you being controlled by the witness. But we take that risk because of all we're trying to find him and we learn some very important information on how to defeat the witness which ultimately leads to us defeating the witness which is destroying his dissenters which weakens him and allows us to kill him. That is the story of the final shape. I thought as far as weaknesses go for a big bad, that was actually a pretty good one. You can get pretty silly sometimes with how they kill uh, major villains and stories. A lot of the time it involves MacGuffins. This time around though, it actually was a fairly logical reason. And I actually enjoyed that reveal and that whole aspect of the plot. But like I said, I didn't like what they did with Zavala. The other characters act quite normal and are quite enjoyable. And that's the campaign. You kill the witness. Get some nice cutscenes afterward, and that's the story. Thought it was serviceable. It was a good ending to the franchise, given how rushed this whole last chapter was. And I'd, again, give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now let's get to gameplay. So transitioning into gameplay, right off the bat, I'm going to give some positives here. The art design was fantastic. They, those guys always pop off. Except, well, Neo Muna was a little bit questionable, but everywhere else in Destiny, everything just looks incredible. Uh... The soundtrack was very good, even though it's not gameplay. The soundtrack was very good. The new Dread enemy faction was really fun to fight against. It's the first new enemy race we've really ever got. The rest are reskins, even though the Scorn, I think, were close enough to being new that they actually feel like a different faction. But the Dread are truly new and truly fun to fight. And the level design was great. They set up the map in a linear fashion so that 
what used to be areas where you just be sparrowing through to get to the main portions of the map are now level spaces. So everything just feels rich. It feels like wherever you go, there's stuff going on and secrets to find out. And I really enjoy that. The after campaign stuff has been really fun. So great job on that. And now let's get to the cons. The bosses in Destiny have gotten so stale at this point, at least for me. I'm so tired of just getting into a boss site and then seeing those little notches at each point in the boss's health bar, knowing damn well a shield's coming up when I get them to two thirds, one third. Stop health gaining bosses. If you can't extend boss fights via gameplay, give up on game design and quit your job. There's other ways to make a boss fight last long and be difficult than just health gating their health over and over again. And I get why they have been doing that up to before this DLC came out. It's all because of Well of Radiance. If they don't health gate the boss, we're going to put a well down and ignore everything that's going on, absorb all the damage being dealt to us, and just kill the boss. But they nerfed Well of Radiance before this DLC, and they had to have known they were going to do that. They had been talking about it for a while now. Why not then capitalize and create bosses that really move us around the room? We won't kill a boss quickly if we're constantly having to fight off ads and avoid big attacks that will one-shot us. But they don't, they don't do it. Like, why are we fighting a big taken ogre? When we could be fighting a brand new darkness lieutenant guy that's like a rolk type character shooting giant beams around the room that we're dodging fighting off the dread trying to find openings to shoot a rocket at him like why did that not happen throughout the entire campaign really disappointed with the health gated bosses i'm so tired of seeing it and i thought this was the time they were going to innovate and do something different and they didn't but as far as health gated bosses go these are actually pretty good ones uh sometimes it can be really boring but they were well executed about on the same level as Witch Queen, which was also pretty good. But I'd like to see more from Bungie. I think they can do better in that department. Uh, they actually kind of did do better in that department at the very end of the campaign. In the 12-man mission, when you fight the witness, you actually have a little bit of what I'm saying, where he's shooting beams and moving you around on the DPS platform that you're on, which was really fun. Unfortunately, though, when you die, there was a respawn, uh, and you're with 12 people, so there's no fear of losing. Uh, whereas if it was done in the legendary campaign, when you die, you're restarting that boss fight. So there would have been more stakes and you would really have been focusing up trying to beat the boss. And I really just never had a moment in this campaign where I was like, damn, I'm getting stuck here. This is really difficult. And I'd really like to see that, uh, after playing games like Elden Ring and Remnant 2 and stuff like that, their boss design is just so much better and so much more challenging. And I'd like to see that get implemented a little bit into Destiny as much as they could. And it didn't, but... Not the end of the world, just just unfortunate. Prismatic, it's alright. Uh, we haven't fully flushed it out yet. I haven't even fully unlocked it. And we don't have the class items, so I can't give too much comments on that yet. I think it's alright so far. Uh, when they first revealed it, I thought it was going to be busted, because I thought all the abilities were going to be available. But it's just a limited set, which is it makes sense, because that's the only way to balance it. Uh, and we'll see what it grows into. I didn't like its implementation of the campaign. It was definitely better than Strand because they actually give it to you this time early on. But unfortunately, then they put these enemies that have prismatic shields into the campaign that you kind of are being encouraged to use prismatic against, even though you can technically use the other subclasses and stand in these pools to be able to break their shields. But it just felt like, why do that? Either just lock us into using prismatic and we level it up through the campaign, or don't. Like, don't go in between where like you're kind of forcing us to use it. I didn't like that, but... Again, that's just a minor thing, and halfway through the campaign, I just decided I'm using Prismatic now. I'm not dealing with these stupid pools anymore trying to kill, you know, break these enemy shields. And it was a lot better once I did that. Um, but that, that's the gameplay. So overall, campaign, I give it like an 8 out of 10, combining both gameplay and story. Probably could have been an 8.5 to a 9 <clears throat> had the story not been so boring in the first half and had the bosses not been so lame. If there was a more intriguing story from the get-go and the bosses were super fun, this would have been a 9 out of 10. They were very close to delivering something really spectacular here, but unfortunately for me, it's just a good, even above average campaign. 8 out of 10. Which is honestly exceeding my expectations overall. I, I thought this was going to be a little bit of a flop. So, well done. Bye, Bungie. And let's move on to the next section. Now, moving on, I'm going to talk about the loot. And I'm going to try and keep this part pretty brief, because... If you already have your hands on the loot, you don't need to hear all about it all over again. And if you don't, you shouldn't really get a spoil for yourself. You should want to go and seek these weapons out and really test them for yourself. So we got like six new exotic weapons. They all are pretty interesting. I'd say the weakest one's probably Red Death in First Impressions, especially since its catalyst is locked behind 
a uh, 40 day uh, time gate till the next episode act starts. So that gun's not really good right now. The rest of them though actually seem pretty interesting. Uh, the exotic armor is good for the most part. The hunters seem to have gotten shafted a little bit. I think both their exotics seem like hot garbage, but maybe they'll be better than they seem. Uh, but Titans and Warlocks both have some interesting stuff added to their arsenal. And the exotic class items aren't available yet, so I can't comment on them, but I'm sure they'll be really good when paired with Prismatic. Moving on from exotics, legendary weapons. They really, they, they hyped up adding in a bunch of new frames to this DLC. They didn't really do that. They added to a lot of the new frames, but they didn't add new frames. So we got a new rocket pistol. We got multiple new two round burst hand cannons. We got a two round burst scout rifle, legendary version. There's, I think three of them added in. Or sorry, not scout rifle, pulse rifle. We already had those in the form of revision zero and graviton lance, but they're exotics. So it's kind of like a dead man's tail situation where they added in the 120 scout. It's not a huge deal to do that, but it's cool that they did it. I wouldn't count that as like a new frame though. Uh, the only really new, new frame is the healer auto rifle. It's a 720 auto, I think, and it, when you hit fire it and have it fully charged up, it heals your teammates when you shoot them, which is really cool. That thing looks like it'll be really good when it has a certain perk combo, it has two new perks on it. And I'm not even going to get into perks, there's a bunch of new ones added in. Most of them aren't that interesting, but the healing auto I think actually has the most interesting perks on it, and it's the only thing with those perks. Um, but yeah, I thought they were going to do a little bit more in the weapon frame department. There also is a new grenade launcher that shoots like a burst of all these pools. I haven't really got my hands on it yet. That could be cool. That could be cool, but that's not really going to come into play until Echoes, and that's not part of the final shape. You have to purchase that separately, so I don't really want to talk about that yet. Uh, but yeah, Comp got a 600 RPM lightweight auto rifle. or I think it's actually a 720 as well. The healer auto rifle might be 600 RPM. I don't even know. There's so many freaking RPMs though. Um, but yeah, those are like the two new frames. They'll be good, I think. That's the loot. If you come to this DLC for the loot, I, I think you're going to be happy. There's a lot of loot. There's some very intriguing loot. I wish they went a little bit crazier in the frame department and added in a bunch of new frames. I still think there's an open door for airborne effectiveness uh, oriented frames, like airborne frames where they have high AE, high stability, and function really well in the air. Uh, they haven't done that yet. I think there's uh, opportunities for like text mechanica frames where the gun can be fan fired or fired faster while hip firing. I think that'd be a cool idea to implement and various other things. I don't want to add in too much of my own thoughts there. Just give you the review. The loot's pretty good. Um, let's move on to the next section. I'm going to talk about the ritual activities now and that's going to pretty much wrap it up. So, and maybe a few quality of life changes. Let's get into that. So wrapping up, I'm going to talk about a couple of quality of life changes and just what's going on in the rest of the game particularly crucible because that's what i care about uh for starters they added in the new pathfinder system for the ritual activities and the pale heart i really like that system i think it's much better than having to go to the tower and get all these bounties and juggle all this different stuff now you can just kind of chart a path through the thing of things you want to do complete it get to the end get loot reset rinse and repeat good system uh it's a little bit restrictive on how many times you can repeat it before the loot drops off which i think is a little bit disappointing i would have liked to see us be able to get more loot before we run out of resets but it's fine it's it's still substantial uh you got the zur and master rahul reworks they both have you know upgrade tracks now and a lot of new loot and new currencies and stuff all good stuff there i'm not going to get in depth about it but it's good uh and then crucible strikes gambit strikes oh, strikes you got one new strike and it's very good, but it's just one. So unfortunately, not a huge increase in the mana activities there. Gambit, you guys are cooked. And PvP. PvP is really just not drawing me in this time around. Uh, Prismatic, I think, is going to do some fun stuff for PvP. I think there's some good loot to take into PvP. But I was really hoping after what seemed to be a good move in the right direction with the addition of the crucible strike team that some stuff was really going to go down the final shape but not really much happened we got the map pack and into the light and some good balance changes then and they're still trying to land on a good special ammo system for the game and they're added in various game modes i just i still don't like where the base systems of the game are at though ever since they added in the ae system in witch queen i just haven't enjoyed the gameplay to the level i know i could 
and it's taken them so long to get the AE system into a good spot. They finally added in an AE arm, armor mod, so you can really get your airborne effect from the stats up. But the fact of the matter is, if you get to 100 AE, which is pretty much impossible to do unless you're running an exotic that you might not want to run, that pairs with the given weapon you're using, you still are worse in the air than you are on the ground. Like, you have 60% of your aim assist in the air, even at 100 AE. That's just really stupid to me. It's just like a clear, blatant attempt to nerf players that want to move and use verticality and outplay people via that aspect of the game. And I don't know what their fear is regarding that, why there can be so much other cheesy stuff in the game, but not being able to just move around in the air. Like, I don't know why that's so worse. There's so much worse than those other things. Like, getting one shot by a grenade or just abused by abilities apparently is okay. But then if someone jumps in the air and starts shooting at you, that's that's off limits. They can't let that happen. And I don't understand that, but it doesn't seem like that's ever going to change completely back or completely to a level that I want. So I just need to accept it at this point. Uh, and then, yeah, there, there's balance changes that are going to affect PvP. Certain weapons got buff. You got a Dead Man's Tail buff. I was trying that. It's actually quite good. It shoots at 140 RPM again while hip firing and other things. I'll have to try out. But yeah, I mean, this time around, it just... Usually with the fall DLCs, I'm really back into the Crucible, bringing the loot in. Don't really care as much this time. But maybe I'll get inspired. We will see. And that's... That's pretty much it. I mean, there's definitely stuff I'm leaving out. I, that's, I can't possibly talk about everything with these DLCs now. They really bring in a lot of quality of life changes. A lot of small ones. Because in the past, they usually do some big system change. Like in Taken King, a new light level system. Or in Forsaken, the new weapon system now it's just like all these minor things but they all amount to a big change in the feel of the game so it's hard to get them all hopefully i talked about a lot of the stuff you guys care about and let me know your thoughts in the comments as for a final rating i'm going to give final shape an eight and a half out of ten i think it's a really solid dlc could have been better had there been more pvp uh, pvp changes and better bosses in pve those are the two big things i care about fun boss fights and fun pvp changes they didn't deliver too much in those departments, but they delivered everywhere else, so I gotta give it a proper 8.5 out of 10. That's a wrap. I think it's one of the best DLCs this game has ever seen. Taken King and Forsaken are still better in my opinion just because of the sheer amount of loot and changes they brought with them. But after being playing this game for so long, to have a DLC still be really fun, I think is a testament to how good it is. So 8.5 for final shape, and that's a wrap. Peace.